Our card. Hello. Dear friends, uh, allow me, on behalf of the management of Russian Aviation, to greet our historic crew and to congratulate you on your successful return and completion of flight. This time, it's indeed an international crew, uh, and we have returned to the native earth. And this space program is an example of how we can resolve all the economic issues. Uh, congratulations on successful return home and congratulations on the completion of your difficult job. We know that your work is work of very courageous and strong people. Uh, allow me, according to Kazakh custom, to hand you a gift. Thank you. As a memory for of Kustanai, here are small souvenirs. So that you remember our earth, the earth to which you returned. Uh, a little girl, Elena, appeared here, surprisingly, and she made drawings for you. Thank you. Also, congratulations to everyone who supported your landing. And again, congratulations on the completion of your goals. All the best to you. Dear Sergei, uh, dear Satoshi, uh, congratulations from uh, Rosa Viace, and congratulations on completion of your expedition. Uh, your work in space is outstanding, and the goals that you have met are amazing, um, enormous. The most important thing is that you have returned to Earth successfully. From the bottom of my heart, I would like to say my thanks to the Akim of the city and uh, to those people who participated in assuring your landing. The meteorologic conditions were very complicated. I am not going to take your time, and according to the tradition, we are giving you the gift of matryoshkas with your photos on them. Thank you.
may I ask a question? Yes, go ahead. Hello, friends. I am journalist. My name is Kabayat. Uh, I'm sorry I'm very bad uh, speaking in English, but I have some questions. Uh, speak me, please, about uh, how in Cosmos. And uh, do you like your profession? <laughs> of course, for all of us, this has been our dream for many years. It takes uh, the road to space is a very long one. Uh, with the help of many people also for the, the excellent training that we receive in many places around the world. But there's nothing that can compare to living in space and working for half of a year. It's uh, magnificent. To, the work is very good, very rewarding. Uh, uh, fully successful. Uh, we accomplished uh, many scientific experiments. Uh, for example, med from a medical point of view, uh, we created uh, pro protein crystallization of cancer remedy treated protein. Uh, because under microgravity, uh, you have a better quality uh, protein crystallization. And on the other hand, when cancer cells grow, uh, you cancer feeding vessels uh, grow around the cancer cells. So if you inhibit the growth of the, uh, the, these vessels, it, it may lead to cancer remedy. So we created that, uh, an, that's called angiogenesis, angiogenesis inhibition related protein, and uh, it is under in the, uh, investigation of 3D structure on the ground. Thank you. Sure. All right, Mike, welcome back. Uh, just give us some first impressions of what it feels like to finally be back after five and a half months. Oh, gravity's rough. Yeah, it really is. It's, a, it's such a big difference. The, the ride home was uh, so amazing. It was very different from my previous experience on uh, with uh, space shuttle flights. Uh, it's a very, uh, very efficient vehicle. That means it's really tight. It uh, fits three, three guys perfectly, and not much extra room. But coming home was, you know, it was everything I expected. They can't train you for some of this, but I, I, I did spend a lot of time talking to some of the, pr the most recent crews to come home in a Soyuz, to, you know, get a really good understanding of what it was going to be like. And I'm glad because it's, it's different. It, uh, at times, it's violent. Uh, coming uh, as we do the atmospheric reentry. It's kind of like you're inside a Roman candle because you see these, it's an ablative heat shield, which means it burns away and it comes off in pieces that are flaming, glowing, uh, just, just incandescent orange. And they're coming by the window, right by the window. And you, you feel that, this is uh, amazing. So you just finished up about what, four or five days of handing over with Dan Burbank, Pr pretty short compared to what we typically have whenever one crew hands over to another. Talk about kind of what you guys talked about and how you were able to really get all that done within just a really short amount of time. We started uh, Dan's handover about two and a half months ago when we knew that he was going to be delayed and we started t doing videos on board. I started doing his handover before he arrived. So I would be doing a certain task and say, let's set up the video recorder, get the microphone on me, and then let's just talk through it. Hey, Dan, here's what, here's how you do this, that kind of thing. And so he's had the chance to study that and in some ways maybe better prepared because if he didn't understand it all the first time, he just rewinds, hits it again, and you know, and then he, he, he watched these until he really understood it. And so they hit the ground running. You know, it's, it's, well, it's just one American coming up there. And he's, you know, he's well prepared. But we used every waking minute and we took some away from sleep to, you know, to just go through. Because there's a lot to learn. Uh, the, the USOS or the, uh, you know, the American side of the station, which does include the Japanese and, and European modules. But it's, it's very large. And people have been living in it for years. Uh, you know, the central part of the station over 11 years now. And so there's there's a lot of things that have just been passed on from crew to crew. 
where things are stowed, how you really hook it together, what the procedure you know will eventually say, but it doesn't yet because they haven't updated it. All those kind of things take a lot of time, and you know, and it was it was very busy, and they're going to be very busy. And I intend to get over to the Mission Control Center, you know, to uh, to talk to him, you know, as soon as we get home in the next few days to. And uh, you know he has my cell phone number, and so I expect to, you know, I expect to hear from him, and that's that's totally fair. We wanted to, you know, we wanted more time, but we did what we could. Okay, so Mike, you were up there during the last shuttle mission. You said farewell to Atlantis. Uh, it's a huge event for NASA. Uh, talk a little bit about, you know, whenever you reflect back on that, what that was like. Uh, it was, a, I mean, being there for the last flight of the space shuttle program was was huge. Uh, there was, it was, it was emotional for all of us. I, the first shuttle mission that I worked was STS-3 back in 1982 when I was loaned over from the Air Force to NASA. So I have a long history with the shuttle program. I saw it, you know, back in the very early days. And, and we've grown up, you know, with this, a very successful program. We've learned some hard lessons uh, through her, but, you know, for, for, you know, a generation has known us as a nation that flies space shuttles on, on a fairly routine basis. And so to be part of that historic last mission it was huge. It was a wonderful crew. They were so great. They it's shorthanded. They just had four people, but they hit the ground running and did so much. They were so effective, and you know we had a great time with them. And uh, they did. I mean, we all did great work together. And you know, I'm just just lucky to be there. Last question. Whenever you look back at your expedition, you guys were extremely busy. Had a lot of milestones. What will you remember the most? The top one or two things you'll remember the most about your time up there. Yeah, I, th I, I, I kind of make a joke. We're, we're proud that we fixed more than we broke and we found more than we lost. It, and that's, you know, one way to kind of measure your effectiveness. Uh, when we, uh, we, we, we changed from the, the, the shuttle, well, the shuttle era, which was really defined, defined the space station construction era. And we went from assembly to kicking up the science program into full gear, and we did. And so we were, we were meeting and exceeding our science goals every week, including when we went down to a three-person crew. Uh, we kept up, we, we still made the science numbers. It's, we're proud of that. My most memorable moment was probably when I was able to capture, you know, to see the aurora as it really blossomed. And that's the only way to describe it. I'd seen it before on my previous space shuttle flights. I've seen it on the ground many years ago, uh, a, a very good display on the ground. But in, a, in the shuttle shuttle flights, when the sun is at a low level of, of like, low level of activity, it's a, a little green on the horizon. This was amazing because you could see the auroras, the northern and southern auroras, come in and they form kind of a donut around the magnetic pole or poles, and 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 that's where it comes stream. This energy, the particles come streaming in to set up this glow, and you could see it, and then you could see enough of it to to understand the the I mean, the three dimensional shape of it. And at times, and I, I'm not sure exactly what makes this happen, but it, it spread far enough that we flew through it. And our, I'm, I'm in the, you know, I'm in the cupola with the cameras, you know, clicking away. And wow, we're we're really getting close this time. And I realized we're going through it. And it's not a solid thing. It looks like it in the pictures, but as you get up close, it's more ethereal. You're, it's, but you, you are enveloped, and, and you know that. And, and not just the green, but the reds, and even blues. I caught some blue aurora, which is the same color blue as our flight suit. And that was just amazing, amazing. Well, it's good to have you back, Mike. I, and you know what I liked about the aurora too, and I could gush on that all day. But I, I, I managed to capture it on, on the cameras to share it. Because, I mean, I loved seeing it for myself, but I think, it, to me, it was really a huge thing to be able to capture that so that I could share that with people. And I, and I, I had such a response from folks that enjoyed, you know, those images. Uh, and, uh, and so I, you know, I'm proud of that. that. And it had nothing to do with our official mission. That was the stuff I was doing at night, you know, trying to figure out how to capture those images. And, and things like that. So, you know, so we kept the station going. We, we you know, handed over to the next crew, and uh, we, you know, did some good work and had some fun along the way. Well, welcome back. Thanks a bunch. <laughs> Thank you.
Товарищ первый заместитель председателя Государственной комиссии. Камрад, uh, first deputy of state committee. Союз. Союз. 702. 702. Crew arrived. No issues in flight. We are all healthy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, good for you. Hello, hi. Here is the bouquet for you. Thank you. Let's go. Let's drive. Так, отъезжайте. Спасибо.